Discover new opportunities together in a new Chevy. Meet up in an Equinox, winner of the J.D. Power Award for initial quality among compact SUVs. Lend a hand in the strong and capable Silverado, or mix it up in a high-tech Trax with an available 11-inch diagonal touchscreen. Find family, friends, and fun in the Chevy that's right for you. Click to learn more. Chevrolet, together let's drive. For J.D. Power 2023 U.S. Initial Quality Study Award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I like to begin each show with just a little fun fact, like Alexa now has what's called conversation mode. She stops if you need to take a breath from time to time. And you could have back and forth words with Alexa without having to say the work read multiple times. So now you can say, Alexa, join in this conversation. And anyone in the room will be able to speak with Alexa as long as that person is looking at the screen and the camera can see them. Now, isn't that something? You can also interrupt Alexa and she's actually going to stop talking. But do not try this on your spouse. It doesn't work with real people. I did. Okay. And you have to give credit to both Alexa and Siri, the only two women in the world who listen to men and do exactly what they say. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, just an example of all the fun and the transference of intellect and know-how that happens here week after week as we talk about living the best digital life ever. Of course, it's the Kim Commando Show, most trusted, and it's the biggest show. You can find us on over 425 top stations from coast to coast. And of course, we're streaming in your favorite radio app, and we're streaming as a podcast, a webcast, commercial-free, all the archives as well for the last three months over at GetKim.com. And a special thank you goes out to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio. And I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And speaking of T-Mobile, you know, I love modern technology, but sometimes simpler really is better. I hate it when someone sends me a super long email. You know what I'm talking about three or more paragraphs going on and on about something. Okay, TLDR, too long, didn't read, just call me. All right, let's start with five things that you need to know about future tech. So you know where this whole crazy world of technology is headed. And let's start with Elon Musk. Okay, science fiction and Hollywood have predicted humanoid type robots since 1927. There was the silent film Metropolis. Then we had the 1950s movies, Forbidden Planet, and The Day That the Earth Stood Still. And then the Superman TV episodes, the 60s, Lost in Space, and the Jetsons, yes. Robin Williams, Bicentennial Man, and then the film I, Robot. And now, at long last, the robots are coming. Mm -hmm. The big question, who is going to make these robots? Some people thought it would be Mark Zuckerberg, but he's too busy trying to be the king of the metaverse. So Elon Musk shocked everyone this week by saying that his humanoid Tesla robot will be here by the end of the summer. He announced a second Tesla AI day. It's going to be on August 19th with, he says, many cool updates. And we expect to see his humanoid bot taking center stage. You know, may, maybe Musk will sing and dance and create shows like Phantom of the Opera, because then we could call it Android Lloyd Webber. Get it? No, oh, ouch. I know. Uh, number two, self-driving driverless cars are coming to San Francisco, and they're there now, and what could possibly go wrong? I recently read a super interesting article about why San Francisco has gone down the tubes with drug addicts, homeless people, and all the other atrocities. Uh, it's posted in The Atlantic, and if you're curious on reading it, it's really a great read. Uh, but speaking of San Francisco, the cruise company is backed by GM, General Motors, and they're all on the streets of San Francisco. Now, these cars have all kinds of tech, LiDAR, radar, all these types of cameras. They can avoid obstacles, recognize traffic signals, make turns, lane changes, even park itself. Now, in San Francisco, in the daytime, you can hop a ride in an autonomous vehicle with safety drivers behind the wheel or nighttime trips in its fully driverless cars. Okay. You can't have a driverless car during daytime hours. So just imagine this. Instead of calling an Uber, you get on your app and you say cruise, this self-driving car with nobody in it, you hop in, and then you say where you want to go. Now, Cruise says taking a 1.3-mile trip would pay $0.90 cents per mile, $0.40 cents per minute, $5 base fee, 
Bottom line, $8.72, including taxes. Uh, an Uber ride, they say, for the same trip is going to be $10.41. Plus, there's no trip, no tipping, rather, in a driverless self-driving car. I don't know about you. I don't think I'm ready to get into a self-driving driverless car in San Francisco at night. Would you? Love to hear your comments. Yes or no, you can drop me a note over at twitter.com slash Kim Commando. Uh, number three on our list, the kids are going to find a way around it. Let's just face it. When kids sign up for a social media account, they have to check a box and say, heck yeah, I am totally over 13 years old. And that's it. Well, the social media companies have been getting a lot of trouble over this. So finally, they say, OK, we're going to do something about it. So Instagram is going to start asking followers to vouch for your age. That's right. So it's called social vouching. So Instagram will ask three mutual followers of the user to confirm their age. The followers must be at least 18 and have three days to respond to the request. That ain't going to work. They're going to totally figure out a way around that. Okay, then Instagram says, all right, well, then we're also going to start using artificial intelligence that can estimate a person's age video by using a video selfie. And it will estimate your age based on facial features and share that estimate with Instagram. We're going to find a way around that too. Oh, well, parents, you got to watch your kids. Uh, number four on our list is when tweets are no longer tweets because they're notes. That's right. Back when we wouldn't wash our hands and we would sit on our couches, and this is before the global pandemic. Uh, in November of 2017, Twitter doubled the available character space from 140 characters to 280 characters. Well, that's just not enough space for so many people on Twitter, so they're going to be rolling out this new notes feature. You can say what you want. You can make it as long as you want. You can include your pictures and your videos and any other tweets. Hmm. Notes? Notes. Uh, sounds like a blog post, doesn't it? Hmm. I know. Twitter, always so innovative. Uh, you can follow me at twitter.com slash Kim Commando. And I promise you, I promise you not to waste a tweet. And finally, number five is the last thing I want to pass along here deals with plastic food wrap. Wow, isn't it just annoying? I hate using it. The plastic saran wrap. It never really sticks on the food. Or maybe it's just me, but then I, I take it out of the roller and then it sticks to itself. Then you have like this clump and you're like, okay, now you got to pull it apart. And then you have to be careful not to cut your fingers on the small industrial grade saw that they put on the corner of each saran wrap box. Okay. But alas, the angels have come. Tech is to the rescue. Not to save your fingers, but to save the environment. Rutgers University and Harvard University researchers, yes, some bright people, got together, and they have developed a future plant-based coating that they say would be greener and safer than plastic packaging for our environment. The approach sprays fibers based on polymer and by, I don't know, polysaccharide, I don't, whatever, and it wraps around the food. And they say the resulting spray protection fights harmful bacteria and prevents spoilage. So this was really, really promising. They sprayed avocados and they extended the shelf life by 50%. Yes. Uh, you rinse off the coating with water. And I can see this plastic wrap. It's going to really, truly change a lot of things. Up in this hour of the Kim Commando show that you don't want to miss, we've got three steps before you trade in or sell an old phone. Oh, we've got a couple of tricks to see if your passwords are being sold on the dark web. We're going to tell you to how you can check to see what Google knows about you and stop the tracking. And Allie, our amazing content queen, is going to stop by with some awesome tips that you don't want to miss. And of course, more of me, Kim Commando. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open. I'd love to hear from you with all your digital questions and dilemmas and how I can help out. And if you have not already, make sure that you download our free Commando Guides. And if you go to commando.com slash free guides, uh, whether you're on Windows or Mac, we have a free guide for you. So if you've been new to Windows, new to Mac, or you've been using it for a while, I guarantee you're going to learn just a few secrets. And they're absolutely free. It's just our way of helping you guys and gals out. Head over to commando.com slash free guide. And let's see, moments away from three steps you need to take before you trade in or sell an old phone. But right now we have, uh, let's see, Emmy in Chicago, Illinois. Hello there, Emmy. Hi there. I am so thrilled you're taking my call. I just submitted my question this week. Oh, uh, wonderful. 
My question is about the clear membership that you have to apply for uh, to get through the lines really quick at the airport. Right. How safe is it? Um, it uses biometrics, facial recognition. Uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with that, but it seems like we're going in that direction. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell you my experience, and this is pre-pandemic, you know, everything in your life, like there's like that moment, you're like, oh, this happened before the pandemic, right? It's that I was in the Phoenix airport and there, uh, the t- there wasn't a long TSA line, but they were recruiting you to try the clear product. And so I submitted uh, uh, an iris scan and a fingerprint, and then the machine broke. <laughs> like, what? The machine broke. <laughs> I'm like, so where's my stuff? Right? Yeah. Okay. And the kid looked at me and he's like, so do you want your $25 gift card? I'm like, no, I don't care about my $25 gift card. <laughs> okay. I want, where's my, where's my eyes? <laughs> where's my fingerprints? <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, it didn't really go through. So I wouldn't worry about it. Do you want to try again? I'm like, no, that's okay. All right. Uh, but, you know, the technology has gotten a lot better since then, and they are certified by the Department of Homeland Security. And it seems like a really wonderful way, especially you in Chicago. You I mean, it works at O'Hare and it also works at Midway, right? And so yeah. you have the you have the TSA line and then you've got the clear line. And there aren't too many in the clear line, but it seems like everybody has gotten TSA pre-check. I mean... Yes, it is longer than the regular line. It is. And I saw, it's <laughs> like, you know what, that was, that's funny you should say that because we were flying recently and I looked at my husband and I said, you know what, let's just forget we have pre-check because the other line's really short, you know, and just go through that line. So um, it's a hundred, what is $189 a year right now? And it is, it is where we're going for biometrics and fingerprints. Uh, you know, it is a private company. And it's not just being used at some 50 airports around the country. They're now using it at venues and at stadiums. And uh, and supposedly, and it is a lockdown database, but it is a little, it is, it's a little kind of creepy, isn't it? I, I think it comes to if you even, you know, even though we're going in this direction, I think it comes down if you're, if you're comfortable giving your information, that kind of stuff out. Yes. And there's a side of me that says it's okay, but there's a side of me that says, well, maybe I, you know, it's a, it's a private company and there's a lot of things that can get hacked. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't know if I'm ready to walk that line yet. You know, it's one thing knowing that we have no privacy on the internet. Uh, But I will tell you that a security system that I'm putting into, uh, into a building is using uh, facial recognition. Uh, and so that if somebody is walking and the, and the security system doesn't recognize that person, it'll sound the alarm. So, yeah, so, you know, so I'm using that technology, but just f- around a facility, but, but with clear, I, I think it's okay. I think if I, if, if I traveled a lot, then I would definitely sign up for it because of course, you know, who wants to stand in these stinky lines, right? And get hung up because somebody still hasn't figured out that they can't bring a bottle of mouthwash with them in their suitcase. You know, it's like, okay, what part of that did you not get over the last 10 years? Okay. Um, but if you do sign up for Clear, you make sure that you look at your any type of your credit cards, uh, American Express, Capital One, Delta, United, they all offer deals on Clear. And so you might be able to save some money from there. Um, I would do it if I traveled a lot. But if I'm not traveling a lot, I would probably say, you know, it's okay. I'm just going to wait in a longer line. Let's just wait for it to be out there just a little bit more, Emma. And thank you so much for your call. And I do appreciate you sending us a note and then, you know, giving us a call here on the show. And again, if you'd like to send us a note, your question, you can easily do it. Just head over to commando.com. And once you're there, there's a link on the right-hand side that says email Kim. Uh, Let's see. Let's talk about Total AV. You can get continuous antivirus protection and block malicious websites with Total AV's industry-leading antivirus security suite. Uh, Kim Commando Show listeners, you are really getting a smoking deal. You get 85% off of the first year of an annual plan at protectwithkim.com. You have to go to that address, protectwithkim.com. Once again, protectwithkim.com. All right. You may be sitting there. You've got some old phones laying around. 
And I know that, you know, you just open up a drawer because you don't really know what to do with them, right? Maybe you don't want to sell them. Maybe you're just like, I'm just going to hold on to it. But before you sell, trade in, or give away any smartphone, there are three steps. These are really important steps that you have to take to make sure that no one's able to steal your money, take over your accounts, have access to all your personal data. Because think of everything that you have on your phone. Of course, you have your email, your text messages, your photos, your videos, your chats, saved passwords, right? Along with just a slew of apps, holding your banking information, your credit cards, maybe in some Apple Cash and Venmo. And that's why you need to take like three steps to make sure this information doesn't get in the wrong hands when you get rid of an old phone. Step one, of course, back up everything important from the old phone to an online cloud account. Step number two, I want you to sign out of every single app on your phone. I know you're like, why do I need to do that? I mean, this way your old phone is no longer associated with all of your different accounts. And finally, step three, this is the big kahuna. I want you to make sure that you do a factory reset on your old phone. This puts your phone back to the state that it was when you first got it. So it's not going to have any of your data on there. So before you do a factory reset, make sure that you absolutely do number one, you want to back it up, and number two, sign out of all your apps. Hey, you want to stay right where you are because coming up, we have a lot more tips, tricks, and secrets, including Ali Sullivan's joining us with her own tips that you don't want to miss. This portion of the show has been brought to you by RoboForm. If you're just so tired of writing down passwords, you don't have to. RoboForm Password Manager makes life easier and more secure by logging you into websites with just a single click. Get 50% off right now at RoboForm.com slash Kim. That's RoboForm.com slash Kim. RoboForm.com slash Kim. All right. Joining us now is our amazing content queen, Ali Seligman. Hello there, Ali. Hi, Kim. So what's going on in Kim Commando content land? So much is going on. And this is one of those crazy to say out loud things. June is almost over. I don't know how this happened, (laughs) but here we are, end of the month. And I thought I would share some of our biggest hits. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, we publish wonderful, excellent, informative news, tips, how-tos, reviews, all kinds of stuff every single day over at commando.com. So make sure you're going there. Make sure you're signed up for the newsletters that apply to you, your favorite ones. Kim, which ones do you think are the? Uh, breaking news, of course. Yeah. Security alerts. Yeah. Uh, tips. And then I'd say the current. Yeah. And then I would say I'm <laughs> going to add one more to your list. One more. Because um, if you get on, if you are just like that Windows guy or gal, make sure that you get the Windows one. And if you just like Apple stuff, get the Apple stuff. And guess what? If you just like Android stuff, ah. <gasps> Just get the Android one. That's it. (laughs) Commando.com slash subscribe. Yes. Yes. There you go. All right. Let's get to it. Now, the most popular articles on our site all month, a little hard to talk about on the radio because they're optical illusions. Oh, my gosh. Yes, really. In most of these, there's a picture and you need to find something in it. Kim, do you do these? They're pretty fun. Yeah, they are fun. You know, and I'm getting a little tired of Wordle. I will confess. (laughs) I mean, today's Wordle word was something that, I really, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I lost. Oh. And, and, you know, I don't want to be a spoiler. We're going to tell you it starts with an S. <laughs> it ends in a T, I think, or an E. Uh, no, it ends in an E. Uh, the word was smite. Oh, come on. I know. I'm sitting there going like, <laughs> what? I mean, I smite you. I mean, who uses that in a sentence? Anyway. I'm going to start using that now, actually. <laughs> okay. So no, on the radio here, I'm not going to tell you how to find the hidden tiger or the elephant or the lemons or the faces, but they are fun. So head to the site and you can try those out if you haven't. And I'm actually going to post a nice roundup that includes links to all those, plus the rest of the stories I'm going to talk about and some other big hits from June. So it'll be one easy place to find everything. Okay, next up, let's talk shopping advice. One of our top stories, groceries you shouldn't buy at Walmart. Uh, They didn't do so hot in a couple of food quality studies, actually, like the store brand Great Value. So, yes, quality, taste, it's in the eye of the beholder, the mouth of the beholder, I guess. Um, But Walmart didn't do so good. A company named Mashed surveyed shoppers, and they found that their private label was the worst one among grocery stores. Another survey, Consumer Reports, they showed that meat and poultry quality, that is one of the biggest Walmart grocery complaints. And turns out you might actually pay a little bit more, too, because they don't always have in-house butchers. See, now, this is interesting, Allie, because if somebody was just tuning in, they'd be like, well, why is this at commando.com? I mean, I just want, 
you know, digital lifestyle stuff. Okay. Well, because your digital life involves a lot more than just your phone and your tablet <laughs> and your computer, right? I mean. It absolutely does. And it's, so these optical illusions, are so it's part of just like a diversion and it's fun. And these alerts that we do, whether it's recalls or what have you, it's to keep you in the know. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we, especially now with everything being as expensive as, as it is, we're really focused on those money tips, too, and helping you save however you can. So if it's your groceries, awesome. And, hey, we'll tell you about grocery apps and all that kind of stuff, too. Okay, let's move on to Facebook. The headline, did someone break into your Facebook account? Check for this red flag. Dun, 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 bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what you ask is the red flag. It's strange devices that are logged in. I've mentioned before that I once found a computer Definitely was not mine in my Spotify account, so I know firsthand that this stuff happens. And sometimes, sure, it could be a hacker. Your password could have gotten out there. They go right in. They change your information so you can't get in. Sometimes, though, you can actually see things lurking around. And it could be someone you know, which is always a bummer. Yes. So if you're lucky, you'll catch it early. You'll still be able to log in. You can go to that devices page and see if anything that is not you is in there. That's super Again, smart. You can do that for Google and Netflix, right, as well? Yeah. So. Yeah, you can do it for all kinds of online accounts. It's actually a really smart way to just make sure, hey, is anybody in here? The streaming accounts are especially good because those accounts and those logins go for big money on the dark web for people who don't want to have to pay to stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's move on to something a little more newsy. Chinese hackers are going after American routers. Yes. This is a big one. Okay, researchers from the FBI, the NSA, and the Federal Cybersecurity Agency, they say that Chinese state-backed hackers have been attacking our communications networks for the couple, past couple years. Okay, not good. Uh, <laughs> that actually includes our home routers. Now, let's be clear. They're not trying to get in so that they can, you know, get on your connection, mess with your stuff, take over your smart lights. They're actually trying to create this big network of compromised infrastructure. It's a little scary. So what can you do about it at home? The most important thing to do is keep your router up to date. Those firmware updates patch the security flaws that hackers like this go after. So if you're up to date, you're good. The other thing to keep in mind, if your router is really old, you need mm. a new one. Yes, it's time <laughs> to get a new one. We're sorry. It, yeah, it is. So there's all kinds of security standards. The big one, it's called WPA. Right now we're on WPA3. If your router is WPA2, which it probably is if you bought it before about 2018, you should get a new one. And now you're thinking, Allie, how do I pick a router? <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Well, we just happen to have the router quiz at commando.com. And so if you go to commando.com slash router quiz, we ask you just a few questions. And then our IT geniuses and our artificial intelligence and our algorithms <laughs> and our digital elves in the background <laughs> will come out and say, you need this router. And we'll tell you why. It's really great, too. You don't have to go through a million reviews on Amazon or wherever else you shop and think, like, what do I need for this? What do I need for this? It's really just basic questions about your house, your devices, you know, how big things are, where you need Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff. So we make it really easy for you. Now, that one was a bummer. So let's end on a really good tech tip. This was actually one of your weekly columns, Kim, why you should create an email address for your home. Oh, you know what? It just – because – you know, over, the, oh man, you don't even want to talk. Well, it's just, <laughs> okay, I still have three pods full of stuff. I don't even know what's in the pods. I mean, <laughs> well, because I sold a house, okay, I bought a house, and I'm building a house. Oof, that's a lot of email, <laughs> it sounds like. It is. I mean, you know, so whether it's inspection reports, landscapers, um, building delays, I mean, just Updates. utility companies. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, what's going on with the city, appeals. I mean, it's just like it became overwhelming. So I gave each house an email address. Love that. Yeah. And even even if you're not building a house, you're not in a big renovation project, you still probably get more house-related email than you realize. So it is a really nice way to keep everything organized in its own place, easy to search, easy to look for things. Um, I have one set up. We actually use, in my house, we have a Spotify account that's just for the house because I kept getting in my car stealing the Spotify, and so the music would stop in the house. <laughs> so we set up an account that's our home email address. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So you can do it with your bills. You can do it with, you know, any kind of correspondence, like you said, if you have projects, um, any accounts that are house-related. 
And it's a nice way you can share an inbox and you don't have to give someone access to your regular inbox. No, that is. That's really smart. You know, and and, and I mean, it really helped me try to keep everything all organized because like, you know, one of the properties has an HOA and then, and I will tell you, so I, I had, um, I had another email address for the property in Maui. And then yesterday, all of a sudden I, I'm getting like invoices for the Maui oh. property, I don't, which I don't own anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? And then. And then I looked at him like, oh, no, it's like somebody, some glitch. It's like from 2018. And I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, thank Phew. goodness. But I knew it wasn't legit because it came in on a property that it didn't even own anymore. So that was awesome. There you go. And so you're going to put all these links over at one spot? Yes, we're going to have a big roundup over on commando.com. So look for that. You can catch up on the optical illusions. Tell us how smart you are uh, and all these news stories. Well, good job, Al. Thanks, as always, for coming on board and joining us and telling us what's going on on the website. And everything's always fantastic, as always. All right, back to the phones we go now. How about Charlie in St. Louis, Missouri? Hello there, Charlie. I'm actually in I'm actually in uh, Metropolis, Illinois, Superman's hometown, Ooh. south of St. Louis, about okay. miles. That's all right. Uh, it's all good. We love Superman. The reason I called is because, as you know, uh, most everyone has a cell phone these days. Correct. But uh, there are times... The service doesn't work. You get a bad storm. You get a an earthquake. There are all kinds of things that causes that cell phone to stop working. And I'm involved with ham radio, awesome. amateur radio. That's great. And the amateur radio. In fact, I've got one laying here beside me. It's about the size of a pack of cigarettes. Uh, ladies can put it in their purse. The antenna it detaches. Uh, you don't even know that you have it. But if something happens, uh, you can instantly communicate. Uh, we have a repeater, net, repeater network around the country, uh, so you can either talk one to another a few miles away or through the repeater about 40 or 50 mile radius. Uh, but it is certainly, from a safety standpoint, uh, is an excellent thing for people to have. Sure. Uh, typically, husbands and wives are not together. They're a few miles apart. This way, if something happens, they can communicate, even though the cell phones are not working. Sure, absolutely. No, and, you know, and, and, you know my husband's a ham, and more than just a ham. Really? Yeah, he's a ham. <laughs> oh, now, you know what we're going to, you know what I'd like you to do, Charlie, is when we get done is let, give me, uh, uh, give me your call sign and I'll have him, you know, have hook you guys up together. Uh, because, you know, and because he's a ham, I know a little bit, I'm not, but he is, and but I I love when they do those um, the uh, the errors in the races so that this way we make sure that hams can handle all those emergency communications. Have you ever participated in any of those uh, exercises like the field days? Absolutely. In fact, uh, tomorrow afternoon I will be going to our field day site uh, uh, here just north of us in southern Illinois, um, and uh, been very active. I've been licensed for a lot of years, and um, but. Uh, been involved with uh, various uh, actual emergencies. Have you uh, over the years? Absolutely. Uh, tell us. Uh, tell us about and, one. Tell us about one. How you how, uh, how you worked with that? One of the emergencies we were we dealt with uh, was in 2009. We had a huge ice storm that came, that was clear across Missouri, Illinois. It covered a tremendous area. There was no communication in, uh, in some in part in southern Illinois. There was no communication into western Kentucky except ham radio. The only way we were able to communicate into those areas was using ham radio for a couple of weeks. It was wow. a horrible, horrible thing. Yet amateur radio connected, and they were able to get the assistance they needed. That is one example. Well, you know, ham radio is our fallback national emergency communication system. It is. Right. I mean, you can't take it down. There's no central point of communications, no central point of operations. And I'm really glad that, that you called. And I'll, I'll tell you, you want to hear a funny story, Charlie? Tell me. So um, so Barry went to, he, I guess Ian was like 15, 14, 15 years old. And Barry said to Ian, you know, um, you know, you should get your ham radio license. And <laughs> and Ian looked down and said, my ham radio license. And then then Barry said, you know, this way, you know. You can communicate. It's a good thing to have. And uh, you can talk to people around the world and you can talk to your friends. And Ian looked down and said, Dad, I have Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different world. That's why I said, I said, well, that's not quite the same thing, Ian. But, you know, but I understand if you don't want to do it. 
Um, so I think it'd be fun to hook you up with Barry. I will. I'm going to do that, okay? And I, and I, do you want another thing I would like for you to do is post uh, the call W5ATA at ARRL.org. That's the National Association's. Uh, it's one of the fellows at the National Association. If some people will simply send an email to him, he will be happy to get them information in their local area. So no matter where they are, we can we can uh, hook them up with a club and that area who can help them get licensed or uh, make other information available to them. Oh, you know what? I'm 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 so glad that you called. We'll actually we will definitely definitely post that in a big way over on our website, Charlie. And thanks again. Uh, thanks mm-hmm. again for taking the time and telling us a little bit. Because, you know, it's a reminder that, you know, we don't think of ham radio as something that we can use right now, but actually we can in a big way. All right, let's go ahead and do a great tip. My sponsor, iDrive, just keeps earning praise. The leading tech publication, Mashable, just named iDrive the best for all needs backup solution. They love the well-rounded features that make iDrive perfect for both business and personal use. That's why I've been recommending iDrive to my listeners for years. It's simply the best cloud backup service available. Easy to use, affordable, includes generous backup space. You have plenty of room. And iDrive can be used to backup all your devices, PCs, Macs, servers, smartphones, and more, all into one account. With their industry standard encryption, state-of-the-art security, you can rest assured that your data is safe. And I love that I can automate backups and never have to worry about running out of space. Plus, all your data is accessible from any device, even your phone. Plans are super affordable. Start at less than $7 a month. Use my name, Kim, at checkout. You'll get 90% off of the first year. That's iDrive.com. Use my name, Kim. iDrive.com. Use my name, Kim, as a promo code. All right. There are three tricks to see if passwords are being sold on the dark web, your passwords. And really, it entails a couple of things. Password managers, uh, many of these programs have simple storage, and they can monitor the dark web, the password managers, to see if your passwords are on there. There's also the cyber news checker and also have I been pwned. Uh, these allow you to type in your phone number, your email, and then you can see if your passwords are for sale on the dark web. And we've got links and more information over on the website you don't want to miss. And still to come, we have more of your phone calls here on the Kim Commando Show. All right, back to the phones we go with Ross in Salem, Virginia. Hello there, Ross. Well, thank you, Kim, for having me on the show. And, uh, and I've been following you for years, and every time I listen, I pick up a tip. Awesome. And especially the ham radio tip we just heard a minute ago. Yeah, he's that was a cool guy. He's cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, into it. One of uh, I, I read your newsletters, and folks out there aren't getting them. Go in and sign up. They're worth their weight in gold. On June 11th, you had a tech tip about digitally signing documents. Right. And you had some variations on ways to sign. Um, and all, and they were great, but. I'm a lawyer. I get paid to annoy people. <laughs> from the yeah, you know, from the first day of law school, we were taught no lawyer can leave anything written by another lawyer alone. So here come these documents on the digital signing, and the platform I'm thinking of is DocuSign. Right. I get a bunch of those things, and there's stuff I don't like on them, and you know I want to edit them. What I'm having to do, and it's not even intuitive to do this, is convert to a PDF or save as PDF, oh, then you gotta print it, mark it up, and put it back in it, there, and send it back, and all that stuff. Um, I, there's got to be an easier way. I mean, sometimes I want to smite the pat- platform, but you know. <laughs> yes, well, yes, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. In a sentence. Um, okay, so you're cute, Ross. Um, DocuSign has a new markup tool that's re- only available for real estate professionals. Sorry, uh, but you might be able to convince them. Uh, there's also, and if you don't want to use DocuSign, there's a nervous. There's another site we use called HelloSign.com. It's cheaper than DocuSign, and it allows you to go into a document and then duplicate the document. Okay, then once you duplicate the document, that's when you can edit the document. So if you're finding that you need to edit a lot of documents, maybe you start using HelloSign or you ask them to send you it via HelloSign instead of DocuSign. And maybe at some point, Ross, DocuSign will say, all right, we're going to let you edit documents. We are going to let you do that. But right now it's just now for realtors. And thanks for not smiting me, Ross. You know, Google has an address. If you haven't been there, you should totally check it out. It's at adsettings.google.com. And that's where you can see what Google thinks they know about you. 
Once again, that address is adsettings.google.com. And don't forget, the show never ends 24-7. Find me at komaindio.com. Thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening.